Hi folks, Atlas Aram here with a special video walkthrough of the upcoming Shin Megami Tensei Persona, set to release for the PSP on September 22, 2009. With the recent Persona 3 and 4 going down as two of the highest rated RPGs of all time, it's very exciting for us to be able to revisit and remaster the game that started the popular Persona series. Completely remade for PSP, this is the definitive version of the game. We've gone back and relocalized every single line of text, and what's more, we've put back some of the content that didn't make it in the first time around. <coughs> Snow Queen Quest! <coughs> the visuals are redone to take advantage of the PSP's widescreen aspect ratio. There are new CG cutscenes which are fully voiced, something missing from the Japanese PSP release. The overworld map is all new, the interface has been optimized and enhanced, giving you more info and presenting things more efficiently, and the music is completely redone. On that subject, each and every launch copy of the game comes in a lovely, slightly oversized outer box, which will include the game and two music CDs. We're basically throwing the full soundtrack into the package at no additional cost. Why? Well, because we love you. Let's jump into some cool things about Persona for PSP and try to teach newcomers a few things about how the game plays in the process. Let's start with battles. Most people end up going through a ton of fights on the path to completing a typical JRPG. And while Persona PSP is no exception, fights aren't drawn out or tedious. There are tons of tools at the player's disposal to make fights as involved or as streamlined as desired. For example, here we'll show you a typical fight from start to finish, just to give you an idea of typical battle duration. Not too bad, right? Compared to some other JRPGs that make you sit through endless and repetitive spell animations, Persona's fights go by at a much more enjoyable pace. But it gets better. Check out what happens when we turn on skip mode, done quite easily by pressing the start button in battle. Note the icon now present in the lower left of the screen. Let's take convenience a step further. We'll pick from the game's auto menu, which lets you do things like replay all the moves you did in the last turn, or give your party a set of preset actions, or even customize what each character will do in auto mode, a simple gambit system if you will. And then things play out. Fast, convenient, and fun, and something totally new for the PSP version of the game. Why, what a wonderful transition into another part of what makes the game so interesting, the negotiation system. Absent from Persona 3 and 4, the negotiation system lets you contact demons you would otherwise have to fight and gives you the chance to win their demon card, which you can later fuse together in the Velvet Room to discover new personas to aid in your quest, or you can ask for some cash or items. Of course, you can also blow it and end up scaring them off or having to fight them anyways. We'll get to the Velvet Room in just a sec, but let's take a look at a full negotiation. Now. Each of the demons, and often you'll be faced with more than just one type, have different personality traits. They could be foolish, timid, gloomy, etc., and it'll be up to you to try and guess which actions on your part will have the best results. In the upper left of the screen, you'll be able to see how things are going. To put it simply, as you make negotiation decisions, you'll be able to watch how they affect the demon's happiness, eagerness, anger, or fear. You'll want to get either the happy or eager bars to increase all the way into the center of the circle. Max Eager, even if combined with any other result, and you'll be able to get their demon card, or ask them for an item, or tell them to take a hike. Max out their happy, and you'll still get a good result, but you won't have a shot at their demon card. It's best to avoid pissing or scaring them off. The results will never be to your liking. So, we have this guy's demon card, let's jump to the Velvet Room where our good friend Igor, a perennial Persona cast member, will help us fuse a couple cards together to discover a new Persona. It should be noted that in addition to simply combining cards, you can also throw an item into the mix and shake things up, maybe ending up with something even better than you would otherwise. This is really one of the most enjoyable aspects of the game, taking the fruit of your labors in battle and making something new and more powerful with it. So, we give Igor the cards, let him do his magic, and lo and behold, a new Persona to put into our party. Do take note of your Persona's affinities. You can't just mix any bunch of Personas together. Some are like oil and water. Let's do a quick run-through of some of the new stuff you'll find in Persona PSP. This overworld map, for example, is all new, and it's how you get around in the game. Both in this map and also in the areas you explore, you'll be able to hold the O button and sprint, something you couldn't do in the original PlayStation version released years ago. 
I love Here's another look at the lovely new the CG cutscenes. Like we mentioned fruit. previously, they're fully voiced, something People exclusive to the North American masks. release of Persona on PSP. Your current self. We mentioned improving the interface, so let's touch on that real quick. In the original release, you couldn't see things like character affinities with personas, weapon or skill ranges on the formation editing screen, which characters can use which equipment, and what the stat benefits are in shops, etc. Like a lot of JRPGs, there are a lot of variables to consider when you're equipping your party. So it makes life a lot easier when you happen to navigate fewer menus just to get one bit of info. The gameplay balance has been restored to what it was in the original Japanese system. This means more random battle encounters and less experience from each victory. With the original North American version of the game for PlayStation, things have been changed to feature fewer random battles and more XP from them. Since characters recover skill points by walking, having fewer encounters translates into recovering SP a lot faster between battles, making the game much easier. And we know how much you guys like a challenge, so expect this game to offer a much more, how shall we say, satisfying balance of gameplay. Or, another way to say that is that it's harder. That's right, just the way you like it. We won't take you too far into the game's story, but we will say that you and your friends, a group of high school students, hear about an urban myth called the Persona Game, which they're told will tell them their future. They give it a shot, but with rather disastrous consequences, as you can see here. Before long, the world is turned upside down, demons are running amok, but fortunately, you've also unlocked a hidden power within yourself, the power of Persona, and it's up to you to set things right. Thanks for watching this video walkthrough of what's new, what's improved, and what's awesome about the upcoming SMT Persona for PSP. It's a big thrill for us to be able to deliver a definitive version of the first chapter in this critically acclaimed series to our fans, while also hopefully giving newcomers a chance to see how everything got started. It's a special game, which is why we're making a special package just for it, and we hope all of you pre-order or pick it up at launch Enjoy your bonus music CDs and get lost in the world of Shin Megami Tensei Persona when it releases on September 22nd.